you know, you solve a problem and you think, okay, that's settled. Problems lead to new problems. That always lead to new questions. That's one of the beauties of the subject. That they're always, whatever you do, it leads to something new. You, it leads to asking new questions. We were talking about Nash in particular. Oh. And uh, she was saying, uh, I was saying how much I admire, admired his work. And she said, did you ever feel that when you heard about some of his results, gee, I wish I had thought of that. And I said, no, what my reaction was, I would never have thought of that. That was my impression of Nash. He had ideas that I would never have thought of. Many mathematicians are poor writers, I have to say. They don't make an effort to make things very clear, unfortunately. There is certainly taste in mathematics, and some mathematicians have very good taste. At one point, uh, at some birthday celebration, or maybe it was a prize celebration for Peter Bax, people were talking about his work, and I spoke about his work, and I said that he has wonderful taste in mathematics. And I also said, it's, it's hard to explain what taste is, but you know it when you see it. And Peter said, yes, like pornography. When I was a graduate student, I read a book by Hardy, a famous English mathematician, and uh, that book discouraged me because in the book, at some point, he says, a good mathematician always thinks of his or her own problems. And when I was a graduate student, I couldn't think of my own problems. It took me years until, several years until I could really come up with my own problems. And I, t I always tell this to, to present graduate students, they shouldn't be discouraged. Also, I encourage young people to collaborate. Almost all my problem, all my work is joint work with others. Mm -hmm.